and welcome back to this art studio so we're still under the water and today we are going to be reviewing warm colors and cool colors we are also going to take out the shapes that we did last time to do an underwater scene and we are going to look at a painting by robert lee nelson one of my favorite artists ever and uh, we're gonna also use watercolor we're gonna use watercolor to paint with watercolor today so let's begin and remember today is a rubbing class and a watercolor color class and you're gonna have lots of fun so let's get started today you need the following materials you're gonna need a white piece of paper remember a flexible one because we're gonna be making a rubbing and you need to be to have a flexible paper okay you're gonna need the pieces that you made last time with the contour line remember that we're looking at contour line the outside so you need these pieces all right you're also going to need warm color crayons okay warm color crayons and cool color crayons you're also going to need a watercolor set and also a paintbrush um a little jar with water and some uh, paper towel okay just in case you need it for your uh, painting all right so are you ready because I'm ready let's begin so let's begin now we have all these pieces here we're gonna keep them here we have our warm colors and our cool colors let's review warm colors make you feel warm and it's hot like summertime okay the Sun is shining everything is red and orange and it's so hot, like a landscape that is hot, that feels hot, okay? And then cool colors are these colors that make you feel cool or cold when the snow's falling and everything's blue and gray and purple and green. So those are the cool colors, okay? So we have warm colors and cool colors. In Robert Lynn's uh, art, artwork, okay, uh, we see that he used warm colors for some marine life and also for some plants. There's also marine life. It's under an underwater scene with living things in it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to use warm colors for everything that we have drawn here, okay? And then we are going to use cool colors in the watercolors, okay? I just wanted you to see this in the crayons before we begin. So I am going to start designing my my work of art here and I am going to put this fish going this way I'm gonna put the turtle going this way the starfish at the bottom the coral right here some little bubbles coming up from here the fish going this way and maybe the Sun maybe the reflection of the Sun right there yeah, well, you know what? I can repeat shapes. So let's begin. I have to take everything off. I'm gonna do the boat first. And my first warm color that I am going to use is going to be brown. So I'm gonna place the, you have to be really careful with this, okay? I need to know where you're placing it. I'm gonna place the boat underneath my paper, you see? Right there underneath the paper. This art is always an experiment. I always say that, it's like science. So it's always an experiment. So let's see what happens, okay? So with the side of my crayon, I rub, and now I see the shape coming up. You see that? And I press on the edge. See, it doesn't matter that you get marks here. It doesn't really matter, okay? I am just rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. And now, I am going to help myself with lines. I'm going to do some lines just to make it look like there is a wood, okay? Just make some lines on it, okay? Ah, oh, there we go. And that's it. I'm going to keep it like that. And also, I am going to do the C bottom. I'm going to put here, like if I'm going to take this out so it's easier. I'm not going to use this one anymore. So I'm going to put it to the side, okay? I am going to make here, like if there was see the C bottom right here the C bottom right there okay I'm just gonna keep it like that and now I'm gonna put my fish on top of my composition wherever I want I put the crayon back 
I take the first thing I'm going to use is my coral. If you see, I made these holes in my coral. All right. Oh, actually, this looks really nice like that. Hmm. Okay, but I am going to do a rubbing today, not a collage. So this coral, I made these holes because look what's going to happen. Corals, really, there are some really nice corals that are uh, red and orange. So I'm going to make it orange. And you know what? If you have like dirty crayons like this one, it's really nice because look, it gives it a really cool tone of dirtiness and orange. <laughs> if that is a color, I don't know, but it's really cool. Look how cool it's coming out. What really nice color it's coming out. So a really cool coral. And like I made those holes in the middle, the crayon doesn't rub there. So it's really, really nice. So I've used this one. I have used my boat. I'm going to put it here. <coughs> I am going to place my turtle. And on my turtle, I'm going to put some yellow. And I think I'm also going to put a little bit of green. Or maybe brown. Green, brown? I don't know. I'm going to put the turtle coming. I think she's going to be coming out of here. You know what? They could overlap. So if you want the turtle going in front of the boat at just a tiny little bit, you can make the turtle, you know, go like right here on top of the boat. It could overlap on top of the boat. So let's try to do something like that and see how it comes out. Because you could also overlap. It's okay. All right. So my turtle is here. I'm going to take my yellow. Oh, perfect. I love it. And now I'm going to put some brown on my turtle. And you know what? I'm just going to sheet this a little bit and I'm going to put some green in the back of the turtle. You know why? Because Robert Lynn Nelson, he also does this. He puts a little bit of, of color also, of cool colors in his fish. So look how cool my turtle is coming out. I love it. If he could see me now, he would be so proud. <laughs> okay, so this is my turtle. I just used it. I'm going to put it to the side. And now I'm going to use this fish right here and I am going to put him right on this side of my paper. I'm going to make him red. Oh yes, look at this. Look at this boys and girls. This is awesome. How much am I enjoying doing this? I love it. Okay, I am going to make a little eye right here. Why? Because I want to. I'm actually going to make little eyes here and here. Why not? Just little eyes. Okay? Now, um, so I take my fish out. Oh, my starfish. You know what? I like pink starfish. So I am going to make it pink. And like I like starfish a lot, I'm going to repeat it. Watch me repeat the shapes now. Okay, I'm going to go fast so I could finish. And I'm going to show you the next step, but watch me. Okay, so now that I have finished doing my rubbing, okay, and I have my underwater scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some crayons and I am just going to make little details. So watch me, okay? Watch. Okay, so now we're gonna go and we're going to begin doing the watercolor to finish our artwork, okay? First thing that I'm gonna do is sign my name, okay? Because then it's gonna be wet and we have to let it uh, dry. So we could mat it and then put it up, or you could put it in your portfolio, okay? Remember, you're building your portfolio. So I'm gonna leave this here, and now I am going to be using the cool colors. Remember, cool colors, greens, blues. So let's begin using cool colors in different parts of the paper and see how that comes out, okay? So remember, watercolors work with a lot of water. Your paintbrush always has to be wet. So we take lots of water, Okay, not dripping, but uh, well, I'm going to use first uh, some, yeah, dark blue. Okay, can you see the dark blue right there? Yes, okay, great. Okay, 
and I'm gonna go from dark to light, okay? So I'm gonna go really quickly, really quickly over everything here, really quickly. Now I'm gonna put some um, green, yeah, why not, some green to make, I am not really cleaning my brush, I am just putting water on my brush because what I wanna do is just mix a little bit the paints, you know, mix them a little bit. So it could be like aqua blue. See like this blue right here, are you looking at? Okay, all right. More water, more blue. Okay, and we're looking at an underwater scene. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of, actually I'm gonna put a little bit of brown at the bottom. Okay, just to make it look like the sand at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, just like that, okay. Not too much, just a tiny little bit, okay? And a little bit more blue so I could finish it off here, okay? Blue and a little bit of green. We mix all of that together, the blue and the green. See, I tap, tap, and I paint, paint in different parts of the paper. And now we have it. We have just finished doing our watercolor rubbing underwater scene. Now everyone's is going to be different. It's gonna be so exciting to see them. Everyone is a different artist, okay? Everyone has their own style, so awesome, guys. Remember, you clean your brush really well, okay? You dry your brush before you put it away because if not, they're gonna go bad and we don't want them to go bad because we're gonna be using them a lot, okay? So take care of your brushes. Now, you take your painting, okay, you're rubbing this one, and you take care of it so it could dry, you mat it, and you could use it for the art show or you could use it in your portfolio and save it because remember, you could always use your art pieces for a gift, any type of gift you want, all right? So let's review. Today we were looking at Robert Lynn Nelson's uh, artwork, at his painting, underwater paintings, which are beautiful. We saw that he used warm and cool colors. We made some contour line uh, pieces so we could make a rubbing. And we made this beautiful rubbing and this beautiful work of art. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you repeat it at your house. And you know what? Next week I'll see you with another wonderful project. All right? So have a good day and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.